Hello everybody, the test is around the corner. It's actually a week from today, I believe. This is 2017, calculus AB, question number six. So let's uh, continue plowing through these. I kind of like this question, it's more straightforward, not as, uh, more of a multiple choice looking questions, in my opinion. So part A, find the slope of the line tangent to the graph at pi. So we have function f of x given cos 2x plus e to the sine x. Now the first step, you have to know the slope of the line tangent is just the derivative. So clearly we find the derivative. And here's what they're testing you on. They want to make sure you know the chain rule. Have a function and a function, and a function and a function. So what's the derivative of cosine of a box? It's going to be the sine of your box times the derivative of your box. Next one, what's the derivative of e to a box? The derivative of e to the box is e to the box times the derivative of the box, but derivative sine is cosine. So that's f prime of x. Plug in pi. And that will be our answer. Sine 2 pi times 2 plus e to the sine pi cos pi. All right. Uh, this answer should be fine. I don't like having sines of pi's and 2 pi's. They're so easy. I like simplifying. The sine of 2 pi is 0. And the sine of, or cosine of pi is negative 1. So my answer is negative e to the sine x. Oh, sine pi. Whoa, 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 what's going on? But what is sine pi? Let's back up. Sine of pi is 0. So that's going to be 1. So part A, the slope is, oh, negative 1. There's a negative there. Sorry, folks. Part B, let k be the function to find there. I'll do part B here. They want k prime at pi, so we're going to find k prime first. So again, we have chain rule. We have a function in a function. So the derivative of h of box would be h prime of box times the derivative of that box. So k prime at pi would be h prime at f of pi, f prime of pi. And so they want you to use your data table skills here. What's f of pi? If you look at this chart, oh my, I'm going to have to plug it in. No, oh, I'm sad. Okay. Okay. We're okay. I just said, I thought it was going to be the data table, but it's not, we're not there yet. So side work, side work, f of, nope, f of pi is cosine of 2 pi plus e to the sine pi. Well, cosine of 2 pi is 1, and sine pi is 0, so that's going to be 2. So this is going to be h prime at 2, and then f prime pi, we just found that. f prime of pi, we found it up here, except Yoshida put x there, and he lied to you. It's pi. It's negative 1. Ah, I like this problem now. That's easy. We did it. Now we can look at our data table. Um, h prime at 2. H prime. Oh, no, no, no. Not our data table. Where's h prime of 2? h prime of 2 is right. There's 2. There's the point. But the h prime is a slope at that point, and the slope is negative one-third. 
because you go down one over three, so it's negative one third. Now we have to find f prime at negative one. No, where'd that negative one? Boy, I am on drugs, I'm telling you. I really am not, but we found f prime of pi. That is a problem I just told you we did right here. It's negative one. So that's just one third. Okay, that problem is not bad. I'm just bad. Part C. We have function m. So on this one, we have multiple things going on. So they're testing you on your basic derivative skills. And this one's pretty pain in the buttocks-ish. This is a product rule. They want you to recognize you're multiplying two functions. So we take the derivative of the first, but now we have a chain rule in this. So the derivative of the first, what's the derivative of g of box? g prime of box times the derivative of that pink box is negative two. So we take the derivative of the first, leave the second alone. We leave the first alone and take the derivative of the second, which is h prime of x. They want that evaluated at two. So g prime of negative four times negative two, h of two, g of negative four, h prime at two. Now we're gonna look at our table and start filling out information. g prime at negative four. They tell us g prime at negative four right there is negative one. So I'm gonna pop in a negative one. And then h of two, h of two, we look on our table right. Oh wow, they're being mean to you guys. h of two is right there. The slope is negative one third. So doot, 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 doot. That's gonna be negative two thirds. That's pretty mean. g of negative 4. g of negative 4 is given right here, which is 5. And h prime at 2. h prime at 2. We did that. That's negative 1 third. Is that right? It just seems so strange. Now, you would leave your answer just like that. You don't do anything else. Do not simplify. Resist the urge to simplify that. Don't do that. Leave it as we had it, and you will be fine. You'll save yourself time and the chance of making a dumb error. Part D. Is there a number C in the closed interval from negative 5 to 3 such that g prime of C is negative 4? So is there a number C? where the derivative equals something. That should scream mean value theorem to you or intermediate value theorem or one of those. And the mean value theorem guarantees that the slope of a tangent line will equal the slope of the secant line at some point if the function is continuous and differentiable. So we need to establish that. So part D, we wanna look at function G. Function G. Look at that. They are so nice. G is differentiable. That's one of the requirements for the mean value theorem. So I'm going to state G is differentiable. Whoa. I don't know what it's doing. G is... Stop that. What's going on? This is ridiculous. Annotate. Back to that. What are you trying to do? G is differentiable. Therefore, G is continuous. Because if it wasn't continuous, it's not differentiable. So therefore, if it's differentiable, it has to be continuous. So we have differentiability and continuity. 
So the other thing we're going to need or show, we have to find the slope of the secant line. So I'm going to draw a picture to give you a mental of what's going on. If here's your graph, if I find the slope between the endpoints, there's got to be a point C, that's the point C they're looking for, where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of that secant line. So if we can find the slope of this guy, call it A, then there's got to be a point where the slope of this one is A. You have to be the same slope. That's an arrow. That's what we have to do. So we have to start with finding the slope of the secant line. So that's our next step. We are going to do g of negative 3 minus g of negative 5. So f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So let's look at our table. g of negative 3 from our table is 2. g of negative 5 is 10. And that's over 2. Negative 8 over 2 again. Again, you could leave it, but actually, yeah, I mean, we're okay. You, ha you know that has to equal negative 4, because that's what they want. They want the derivative to be negative 4. So it better be that the slope between those two points is negative 4. So we found the slope of the secant line down here is negative 4. Therefore, there must be a point where the slope of this tangent line, or the derivative of the function, is equal to 4. So I am done. I have differentiability. I have continuity. I have the slope of the secant line. My conclusion, therefore, you will take all of this and rewrite that right there. I'm not going to write that. We're going to save some time. That's it. So they're telling you what you want in question D. So once you proved everything to prove that, you just restate. Therefore, I've shown what you wanted. That's it. Have a great day. Talk to you later.